Do you want to build a chicken tractor? Let me show you this chicken tractor that I recently built with my husband and maybe it'll give you a little inspiration for a chicken tractor that's right for you. This chicken tractor here is an eight foot by eight foot chicken tractor. I wanted a chicken tractor that I could get into but also lightweight enough for me to be able to move it. I did a lot of research into different styles of chicken tractors. I did like Joel Salatin's version of the chicken tractor with how lightweight it was and easy to move. So I did use his method of stripping two by fours in half and one by sixes in half to make a sturdy, movable chicken tractor that's lightweight. Joel Salatin's chicken tractors are about two feet tall because he's raising broilers in there from chicks. I knew that I would have larger roosters in here and I wanted it to be versatile. So I did go with a three and a half foot height. That way I'm able to go through the side door and get in there, crouch down to move things around and do any maintenance. And it gives some extra head space. It was important to me that my roosters had a roosting bar and so I needed to make sure they had enough space to go up on the roost and have head space as well. I also looked into John Suskovich's chicken tractors as well which are much taller than Joel Salatin's but it's still movable so in the end I kind of went with a combination between the two. I went with Joel Salatin's lightweight option by stripping the wood and I went with a little bit more height after seeing John Suskovich's chicken tractors at he can walk into and I went in the middle of those two. I'm not walking into my coop but I can crouch down and get on in there. <laughs> I found this shed door on the side of the road, cut it in half to make a small door. I got the hinges and the gate latch here from Home Depot. I have it latched with a carabiner for extra safety. Inside here I can crouch down and still have a little bit of headroom, not too much, but it's enough for me to get in here and work. I was able to put in this perch for them, as well as this roosting bar here. I do have a barrel in here that rolls with the coop as I move it. This is just to give my roosters extra options. Sometimes they hang out inside, sometimes they like to hide just behind it, but most of the time they're either up on the roost or eating the grass. I did enclose the entire chicken tractor in goat wire fencing that I had left over from my last goat fencing project. So I was able to use that up. I was also able to get the tin metal roofing as leftover scraps from a project my parents had done. I was very fortunate to have that material on hand. Some of the wood I had on hand and the rest I did buy at Home Depot along with the hardware. And all of this is screwed together. So we did use a box of screws for that. I did spray paint it black. Altogether, the cost with the wood, the spray paint, the hardware, I would say was probably about $500 to build this. And I do expect it to last a long time. Now, to make this coop movable, that was the most difficult part of this entire project. And it took me a while to figure out the best way to do that because I wanted to be able to move this coop on my own. Sure, my husband and I could move this together, but I wanted something that was going to be simple, easy for me to move on my own. And so it was a lot of trial and error trying to figure out the best route. I started off by putting small wheels on the bottom of the back of the coop. That was a no-go. Those wheels were just too tiny. I tried using... <laughs> One of these, I tried using a scooter. I was trying anything with wheels to get underneath it to get this thing to move. And honestly, the wheels were just too small to move this big of a chicken tractor. What finally worked was big wheels. <laughs> so we got these big wheels from Home Depot. They do pivot and turn and go sideways. So I did have to find a way to stop them from pivoting. So we did put wood on each side. The same with on this side here. So these are some heavy duty wheels, but they do the trick. So now I can move this on my own. We did put some handles on the front. Come see. So these handles we also got at Home Depot. 
two hand holds to be able to lift the front end off the ground and roll it forward. So it is heavy, but I'm not moving it far. I'm just moving it so that they have fresh grass. And so usually I'll move it every two to three days, depending on how quickly they are eating through the grass. To get the goat wire adhered to the wood, we got a roll of galvanized pipe hanger straps. And that's what we cut and used to screw down the goat fencing. So we would just put a screw on each side and that metal would actually hold it into place. So we did that all over this rooster coop to keep everything flush, both on the top as well as the bottom. It does keep the goat wire very sturdy and in place. This has been working out well for my roosters. I do let them free range during the day and they return in here at night and they have been very comfortable in here. When it rains, they do all go underneath the tin and they'll get up on the roost and just hang out in there and they stay nice and dry. However, for winter, I will winterize this to make sure that the entire coop stays dry and draft free for them for the winter. So this, as it stands, is for spring, summer, and into fall before the cold weather sets in. But I'm really happy that the roosters are flourishing in here. They're growing really big. They're enjoying eating the grass and picking and finding bugs as they move along the yard. And as for bracings, we do have one center brace going down the middle here. We also have diagonal braces across the way. And then from the bottom to the top, there is a diagonal here, as well as a diagonal here. So we're using those as our braces. You'll also see in these corners at the bottom, we have corner bracings, as well as at the top here, there's another corner bracing. Just because we're moving this coop, we wanted to make sure it was secure in each corner. Now when cutting this tin to size, we did use tin snips to cut that. Just be really careful because it is very sharp, especially when you're cutting it. We did use screws and screwed right through into the wood below to attach it. And that's what we call our rooster coop, our very own chicken tractor. So if you are planning to build your own chicken tractor, definitely think about what type of style tractor is gonna work best for you and on your farm, and whether you wanna be able to go in it or just be able to lift the lid and reach down in there. We're really happy with our rooster coop and we wish you the best of luck with your coop plans. If you like this video and you'd like to see more chicken videos, we have a whole chicken care playlist that you can check out. And if you haven't started your farm yet, what are you waiting for? Get your farm on. One, two, one, two, three, four. Do you want a farm? A wicked awesome farm. Watch this channel to learn what to do. We love to farm and we'll show you. Yeah.